Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to a beautiful day in Houston, Texas. It is, it's okay. Yesterday was actually really nice. Clear skies and just beautiful weather, but today it's a little cloudy and quite windy, but we are gonna take out the cars today. And on top of that, I am gonna do a couple of installations. Now, I've been waiting to do this for a little bit of time. I'm gonna go ahead and just take care of it just because the weather won't permit me to do other things. But we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the horns on the GR Corolla. Now, interestingly, most people, they do the, I think, Hella horns, or they do a, uh, I guess, the Amazon upgrade or Alibaba. But I went with the uh, Toyota upgrade they have from Japan. Now, they don't actually offer one directly from uh, Toyota for the Corolla. Now, here's just the part number. Now, they have like, I think like 20 or 30 variations of this horn. Uh, this is just the one that I saw on the Corolla forums that people use to upgrade their Corollas. It is uh, used in Japan to upgrade the Land Cruiser horns. And the thing I like about Toyota, of course, is, you know, OEM, uh, you know, the OEM look, but also the harness is OEM too. So this is something I felt was really important. And to be honest, the price wasn't that much more. I think it was maybe like $10, $15 more just to get the OEM uh, version of the horn upgrade, which is, I think is great. This is actually a bag of cat litter. I'm gonna put it outside, or actually in the garage, and I'm gonna dump my brake fluid into the uh, cat litter, and just, I think it's supposed to let it slowly evaporate. And when the cat litter is dry, uh, I'm just gonna throw away the cat litter. Unfortunately, my local auto store, they only accept automatic transmission fluid and oil, which I think is perfectly fine. I'm just glad that they accept automatic transmission fluid because I don't think you're required to accept that. Uh, but brake fluid is a big no-no for them. Uh, so unfortunately, I had to figure out how to dispose of it myself. And apparently, cat litter uh, is one method of people have used. I saw that online. Another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it later tonight is I'm going to install the STI Cherry Red Lip onto my GR Corolla, what's it called, my Grow Motorsports front lip. Now I would like to do the installations. The only issue is the weather. It's just variating too much. The temperatures are changing too much. So my main issue is that the adhesive won't cure uh, as strong onto the body of the car. So I wanna make sure that uh, the weather is gonna be consistently over 70. So it may be another month before I can install it, but might as well get prepared. I think it'd be a great look for the car. Give it a little bit of unique flavor uh, because I think the Grow Motorsport body kit is actually quite popular. So I think it'll be pretty cool uh, to add another OEM manufacturer's part onto a uh, completely different car part. Um, so we'll go ahead and get that started. But first things first, I am gonna take out the GS. I'm gonna take my dogs out for a walk. Uh, I haven't driven the cars for two weeks, so I'm a little excited to drive them. Um, I probably won't do the in-car thing just because it's kind of, I don't know, I mean, my last video I did was like way too long. I think it was like 45 minutes or something like that. So um, I'll just wait until I do upgrades and I'll drive them around or whatnot, or I'll figure something out. Don't worry, guys. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right. There was one thing I did forget to mention, and that was for the WRX. Definitely want to do some work on that. Um, I did spray the, I think it's the center exhaust. I already sprayed the, uh, the bolts that are holding it in uh, with some penetrating fluid. Uh, it's actually this stuff right here. Uh, let's see if I can put it right there. It's Kano Aerocroil. Um, this stuff supposedly is like the top, 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 top. Um, of the best types of penetrating fluid when it comes to removing stuck fasteners. Uh, oh, look, the sun came out. Well, whatever. <laughs> it was pretty windy. It, uh, actually, yeah, it's not windy anymore either, man. It was real windy earlier today when I was driving. Not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and work on the WRX first. I'm going to remove that center pipe from the, uh, I guess, this front uh, part of the pipe. It's actually a lot easier to remove on a WRX and an STI because the STI has the O2 sensor in there. This one doesn't, it's on the, only on the front cat. Uh, I think the, the second cat doesn't have one for some reason. Um, don't know why. Here is the hardware, in case you guys were just curious. Uh, there is a, a spring, I guess, screw set. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I've only seen these for exhaust systems. Um, this is a mounting bolt. It just kind of holds the uh, exhaust in place as you're putting these bolts in. And then here's the front ones. These. Um, we're the ones that need definitely to put penetrating fluid in uh, because they are basically the closest to the uh, exhaust manifold um, in terms of the exhaust pipe. So these get pretty hot, I believe. And then just in case I didn't get a clear picture, here is the uh, Kano Aero Croil. Um, this stuff is supposedly the best. It has a nice pine scent to it. Uh, so just in case you guys were 
wondering what it smells like. Uh, here is the catalytic converter, I believe. This one doesn't have an O2 sensor. Um, the STIs do have it. It's strange because in the FSM, they actually tell you to remove a O2 sensor. And I was just like confused in the very beginning. And I read on NASIOC that actually it's, it, FSM is wrong. There's no, uh, there's no O2 sensor for WRXs. Um, but yeah, this section right here is the closest to the engine. It gets pretty hot, as you can tell. You can look at how the metal has basically changed um, its composition from the heat. And then this area here, this is where the uh, the springs go. I think the springs are on this side. I can't remember. But this is a, uh, what is it called, a, uh, a gasket for the exhaust. There's actually both sides have it. The other one I just left on there. But this one I did replace recently, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this one there. It was pretty expensive. I think it was like 30 40 bucks for this gasket, so I'm not going to replace it. Real easy to take out. Uh, that's the good part, especially for WRX, is because you don't have the O2 sensor. So now... Get to work on the much easier stuff. Get to work above uh, the car and uh, do the, I guess, the horn upgrade for the GR Corolla. Uh, one thing I did want to mention is that uh, for those of you from Houston, you probably know about a racetrack called MSR Houston. Now, I personally have never been there. I don't track cars, but I did put a reservation down for a garage condo there. Um, I do want to get a space uh, to park more cars, obviously and also put a lift. Um, you know, I don't mind working on jack stands, especially I want to show, uh, I guess, the people who are watching uh, my videos that you can do the things like engine mounts uh, on jack stands. Um, it's definitely not as easy as it is on a lift, um, but I definitely want to get a lift for my, uh, for my cars when I do oil changes and also when I'm checking suspension components and kind of just reviewing my all my installations to make sure everything is uh, A-OK -okay and uh, good to go. And uh, honestly, if I get a GT3 and a GT3 RS, I believe those cars, you have to track them. Like, you have to put them up in the 9,000 RPMs. Um, otherwise, the engines, they don't get adequately cooled, um, and they start to wear out and need to be replaced, I think, sub-20,000 miles because um, those cars were designed to have high oil free, uh, efficiency at high RPMs. So if you drive it really slow, engine's not working efficiently and possibly overheating and uh, getting ruined, actually. Um, so those cars were meant to be raced. Uh, but yeah, anyways, just thought I'd let you guys know. Definitely hoping um, in the near future you guys will see me in a garage condo. Uh, MSR Houston has not verified when they plan to start building um, the garage condos. And personally, I, I don't even know. I don't... <laughs> You know, I'm trying to get the funds right now to uh, put down a down payment for everything. Hopefully, just buy it straight up. Um, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm going to need some time anyways. Um, until then, I'm just going to work on my jack stands and the wheel cribs um, for you guys. So yeah, see you guys in a bit. Going to start on the GR Corolla. Okay, guys. Well, we are going to start on the uh, GR Corolla horn upgrade mod. Um, I did put a microphone outside so that way you can hear the OEM horn. Now I will also put two links below. One is from, I think, Anthony Doe. He's actually a Houston GR Corolla owner. So shout out to you, Anthony. Thanks a lot for all your help. Another guy is Car Stomit. Looks like an East Coaster. Um, definitely want to give him a shout out too and thank him. Uh, both of them had very good insight on how to uh, upgrade the horn and ultimately help me make the choice to do the OEM upgrade. Um, to, because based on the knowledge that they showed me. Um, but yeah, anyways, here is the OEM horn. Going to go ahead and honk it. <laughs> Definitely sounded like my WRX horn from back in the day. I actually upgraded my WRX horn too. That sounds really puny. It's okay, not a big deal. But from what I heard, you cannot hear that horn if you're in another car. So that is a big, big deal. So I did uh, buy the OEM upgrade for that purpose also because it is dangerous if someone can't hear you. Um, once again, I'll do it again, and just so we can kind of both hear it. Yeah, that sounds really puny. Anyways, all good. No problem. It is a Corolla. What do you expect? Uh, that's what the upgrade is for. JDM. Got to make a little money, I guess, in Japan. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, guys. Well, I did remove that front area cover. Uh, that was really easy. The one thing a lot of people didn't show was this piece that was here. So if you see here, that's the piece. That's that clip area that they were talking about. So if you look above... There's a little area here where you can put the flathead down and you can squeeze this section and then you can kind of lift it up and then use the other side. Uh, once this area kind of slips up, you can push down on this part too and then you can pull it out. Um, also, <laughs> something I didn't do was also remove the clip that was here. I didn't realize that. There's actually two clips uh, holding this down, one right here and another one right there. Uh, something else you could do is you could just actually just, um, it's actually this hole right here. You can actually just reach under too 
um, push it out. I actually don't advise doing that because you do have your radiator right there, so you don't really want to touch the fins. Um, but anyways, there's the horn right there. I think there's only one of them, and I believe the second spot that Anthony Doe used was somewhere over here. I can't remember. I'll have to take a look. Um, but uh, once it's complete, I'll show you guys everything. Okay, guys. Well, I did finish the install. I don't know if you guys can see all of it, but here is one of the horns, and here's the other one right there. It's a pretty clean look. It's very OEM. The wiring harness actually looks exactly like the existing wiring there. As you can tell, I zip tied it in several places. Uh, I just basically followed it. it. It's a good length. There's not too much slack. Uh, something else that I did that was actually uh, talked about in the installation manual was to go ahead and electrical tape uh, the exposed wires. I did use something called Tessa tape. It's something, it's, it's basically the same thing as electrical, regular electrical tape, but it has a kind of a fabric backing, so it sticks really well um, and it's a lot easier in my opinion to install and uh, to be honest it feels a lot stronger so I, I do use the test of tape um, but it's up to you guys if you have electrical tape lying around you might as well use what you got um, but interestingly the uh, this bolt was not an existing bolt but it was supplied by the Toyota o, uh, upgrade horn so I went and used it and luckily it came with some spacers uh, because you do need if you can still tell here there's like a lip uh, that you'd kind of have to offset the bracket by. So that fit in uh, perfectly using the spacer, the uh, OEM screw or bolt, I'm sorry. And then I had to buy from Home Depot and Lowe's a M6 lock nut. It is really loud, very noticeable. Now I remember I had put the mic right here for the Toyota Corolla one, um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and actually honk it from inside my um, cabin with the mic inside the cabin because it is really loud. I, I don't want to like hurt people's eardrums. Um, it's noticeably louder. The upgrade is just an amazing upgrade. Definitely worth it. One thing that you do want to keep in mind, and I'm going to go ahead and test it also, is the fuse for the Toyota GR Corolla. It is 10 amp for the horn, and I believe these horns were made for a Land Cruiser, which is rated at 15 amps. The fuse is so. I went ahead and tested out the amperage going to the wire uh, near the horns with a clamp multimeter. Um, I don't have it here, so I can't show you, but I'll put a link below for the uh, clamp multimeter. You don't really need it, in my opinion. Um, but it measured at around 5.8 amps, and uh, that was at the horn. Now, what really matters is the amperage going across the fuse. So I did order something from Amazon called a Fuse Buddy. Uh, once it comes in, I'll, I'll go ahead and test it, and I'll show you guys um, like how you know, if it's hopefully it's, it's reliable, but it should be extremely helpful in the, being able to determine the amperage across the fuse. Uh, it's a pretty good look. I like it. It's very OEM. And uh, one thing, and I'll see if you guys can see it. The one thing is it's not like very noticeable through the grill. Uh, so I like that as well. Um, also, just be careful while you're installing it. Uh, I did drop the spacer down. Um, into the engine bay. Luckily, there are some vents. Um, this is really interesting aerodynamics. You, you should take a look, guys, when you take a when you see this. But it dropped down one of the vents, but, and I was easily able to grab it out from the front grill. Um, but usually, this cover is here, so all the air goes through the vents. I don't know if I, you guys can see. Let me zoom in. Can you guys see it? No. It's, oh yeah, there you go. If you see, those are vents that are pulling in from the front grill, and it shoots air up into this area um, to cool the intercooler. And the, uh, uh, well, actually not the intercooler, I'm sorry, it cools the uh, radiator. And uh, it then it goes and puts cool air into the intake um, and then goes into the uh, air box, which is pretty cool. Now, interesting thing about this air intake is it does have holes here. So it does pull some heat from the engine. Now, Toyota GR does sell um, some really expensive, hold on, let me see if I'm zoomed in. Oh, yeah, they sell some really expensive uh, part which is basically it just basically covers up those holes right here and it's like freaking like a $400 piece I, I completely do not agree um, paying that much for that I think it should be around maybe 180 um, which I think probably is the retail price of Japan so we'll see if I can get it uh, for a much cheaper price just gotta wait uh, for more uh, actually I think there's a really good cold air intake that's coming out um, that one I would get I'm gonna wait for that one to come out hopefully um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put everything together here. 
And then I'm gonna show you guys, I actually started working on my front lip for the GR Corolla. I can't install it just because of the weather, um, but I will show you, I did fit the STI front lip to it. It was a little bit semi-difficult, um, but it worked out real nice. And I'll show you guys once I finish up right here and button up. I actually almost did forget to show you guys what the horn sounds like. Now I am gonna bring the mic inside the car just because it is really loud, but just listen to this compared to the old one. I don't know if you guys can hear how loud that is. That's from inside the car, but it is freaking loud and it sounds, well, good. <laughs> so real glad to do this mod and uh, definitely is worth it because the old one, I mean, you honestly, you, like people probably can't hear it inside their car, especially if they're playing music. So this is a good, good upgrade for safety. Um, of course, I wish I, you know, the exhaust was a lot louder, but that is what it is. Okay guys, well, just wanna do a quick cutaway. The fuse buddy, which is right here, did come in. Uh, basically how it works is you just remove the existing fuse, which was the 10 amp uh, for the Corolla horn, and you just put it in this spot, and then you, you know, plug it into where the original fuse was put. And here is the clamp multimeter I was talking about. So basically the amp, anything over 10 amps, basically you have to use this. Now this is 10 amps, but you know, for you know all the multimeters, I don't think they're very accurate if they're gonna go all the way up to 10 amps. So you basically just loop this. You basically just clamp this around this loop and then, oh, just dropped it. And then you're going to, uh, you know, honk the horn. And I do have a max readout right here, uh, right here, a max min readout. So I don't have to be present looking at the LCD. All I gotta do is honk the horn and it'll measure the max reading for me. Okay guys, here's everything set up. I got the fuse buddy plugged into the original fuse, uh, I guess, placeholder. As you can tell, there is 0.15 amps already, so there is a little bit of parasitic drain coming from the horn. I don't know if that's a good thing. You would normally like to see zero. Uh, but anyways, it is set to max amperage, so I'm gonna go ahead and honk the horn. And guys, this, this is a loud horn. I mean, there is no joke about that. Uh, let me go ahead and just honk it real quick. <laughs> Woo, that is loud. Let's see what the max reading was at the fuse. All right, it's not too bad, 5.55. So I think we're pretty safe. Um, triple five soul, baby. <laughs> Anyways, I think we're pretty safe at 5.55 to be able to go ahead and use the uh, 10 amp fuse. So. This device is a great device. I really wish I had it when I was doing more work on my WRX because, man, I do, I do a ton of work uh, with the fuses on my WRX. So for those of you who do do the uh, horn upgrade, uh, I don't think you have anything to be concerned about in terms of the high amperage ratings. Uh, you know, the fuse, I'm sorry for the fuse not being sufficient enough. It is five amps. Now, Toyota being safe, they probably realized the longer you honk the horn, maybe the higher the amperage goes. I really don't know. Um, so I guess it really is up to you guys if you want to you know, do this modification. One way I would say to uh, be safe is just to use one horn. Uh, don't use the other horn. Um, I've read about people just using the, I think the 400 hertz one instead of the 200 hertz one um, just to be safe and not I guess blow a fuse out. Now you will know if it's too much, the fuse will blow. Um, so that, that could prove to be a dangerous situation. So at your own risk guys. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you, those of you that were concerned, like myself, 5.55, uh, I personally feel comfortable um, not having to worry too much. And on top of that, in the forums, didn't really hear too much uh, complaints about the fuse blowing um, with, these, uh, with these horns. So um, anyways, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, let's get back to the, uh, uh, what is it, the original, uh, whatever. <laughs> now let's get to the, uh, let's get to the front lip. Okay guys, as you can see, there is the GR Corolla Grow Motorsports front lip with the STI Cherry Lip installed. Now this actually took all of the, probably, I would say, uh, I don't know, about two hours to install, so it wasn't too bad. You do have to use a heat gun. Um, quite extensively, and there's the heat gun that I used to kind of mold this uh, this lip, this STI lip to the uh, front lip. Um, so you, you just be careful, don't melt any of the plastic too much. 
Um, something I noticed here was there is a bit of white. Um, I'm not sure what caused that. I think it's actually paint. I hope, hopefully it's paint, um, not damage to the lip. Uh, because I, I'm not uh, taking this lip off and reinstalling another one. I think because of the age and how, how the lip was stored, a lot of it kind of is bubbling up. Um, so I am going to have to heat it down again, and uh, I'm going to roll it with a, I guess, I think these are called joint rollers uh, for wallpaper. I'll go ahead and put a link below for this one. This one's good quality. It's plastic, too. So I can probably use this for all my stickers or, you know, dynamat, stuff like that. Um, but I am going to go through it again. As you can see right here, there's a huge... Uh, I guess a bubble up, so I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and I'm going to push it down a little bit more. But the heat gun is by far the most helpful. It helps you kind of mold the rubber because it turns kind of malleable, the rubber does, and you can kind of mold it the way that you want it. Um, definitely it looks amazing. I really like it. I think it's going to really be a good addition. Uh, it really pops on the GR Corolla, especially with the blue flame. It's going to look real nice and excited. Unfortunately, I believe the uh, Elantra ends, I think they're called ends, right? I can't remember. They kind of have that same type of uh, following where they do the red, the blue, and the black. But I'm going to give credit to STI. I, I believe they were the first ones to kind of bring this color into uh, style with uh, as an accent color. Um, they did it years ago. So mad props to STI. I think they do by far some of the best design, um, even beating out you know the Italians and all that in terms of aftermarket, just cool stuff for OEM. Um, so I definitely love STI. I just wish they were reliable like Toyota, um, but they're not. But at least I'm able to use something on my Toyota, which is really cool. So that's that. Uh, next step will be to install it once the weather gets a little bit warmer because it does rely a lot on the uh, sticky tape to adhere to the body of the car. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.